All right, so thank you for uh, joining. This is the class to a class about keys to supernatural ministry. We will pray and get into the next key that we have for today. Um, just want to request one of us to please lead in prayer. Brother Paul, are you are you able to uh, lead? I can hear you in this class. Yes, I, I can. Go ahead. OK, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you for this opportunity that you brought us together to listen and to learn your word. We pray that, Lord God, let the spirit of supernatural knowledge infiltrate us and let us guide us, Lord God, as we go in our ministry and as we go into the class. Commit the pastor into your hand that let this deliberation bear fruit in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Paul. I appreciate that. Okay. So uh, before we move further, so far we have discussed uh, a couple of keys. Uh, and I thought, you know, for four keys we've discussed so far, uh, any thoughts or any questions, comments, or in general about the supernatural or what you're learning from this course, it'd be good to know where you're at so that, uh, you know, I, I know how to go forward from here. So please feel free to share. So there was uh, one question which uh, you know, we had on the e-learn where one of our students had asked, why is it that believers don't flow in the supernatural easily? So I thought that was a very interesting question. So then um, uh, I just made a comment saying, one needs to be aware of the ways of God, isn't it? That's what we said. We have to learn the ways of God, the provisions that God has in, in his word. Uh, and that's where we pick up keys like the power of faith, uh, keys like the power of the word, the power of the renewed mind, uh, awareness of the realms uh, You know that, that uh, we, we are part of both the spiritual realm and the natural realm. Learn how to see the supernatural realm and the things of the supernatural realm come into the natural realm. So uh, I just shared that, you know, one needs to develop the knowledge in all of these aspects and begin to practice it. So when we do that, um, somehow our, our human spirit becomes more mature, more sensitive to the ways of God. And we begin to see more of the supernatural. Okay, through the lives of believers. Now, if believers are not aware or believers are not walking in these things, uh, then even though we have the mandate for the supernatural, it becomes difficult you know, for us to see the flow of the supernatural through our lives. Uh, so that was what I shared. So what, what do you feel? What is it that limits believers uh, from moving in the supernatural? Okay, I'll just ask Zeli, you have any views, any thoughts? Oh, John, John can share first, and then Zeli. Yeah, Pastor. And that uh, prayer is not answered with fear. Um, so it might be not for me, kind of a thing. So unanswered prayers might hinder uh, believers to push themselves. Uh, 
Okay. So, uh, John, your voice was a little interrupted. I'm just trying to understand what you uh, said. Uh, so you're saying uh, the reason why people don't experience the supernatural is because they are they still hold on to the disappointment of unanswered prayers. Is is that what you were saying? Perhaps they uh, they prayed for a matter for a long time and they have not uh, oh. experienced that. And, okay. Uh, now, when this matter comes, they feel like, oh, it's not for me, or <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, that's that's so true. When, uh, even healing, for that matter, if we've prayed a few times, it hasn't happened. So when we are praying the next time for healing, I support, you know, that, that faith level goes down. So how do you deal with it? How do you deal with it, John, in such an experience? You're on mute, John. OK. We're not able to hear John. Uh, anyone else, if you have a view, when people, their disappointment limits them, how do we deal with it? Okay, yes, Lubega. Pastor, it's a question of association and doing hard work on yourself. And uh, because if in case I do pray and I think I feel like discouraged, I, I should I can go back to the word of God. What does the word say about discouragement? And association can be still going to my mom she's also a pastor saying mom <laughs> what, what do i need to do or uh, peers because you know leadership and all spiritual warfare can be both vertical and horizontal vertical you look onto god and horizontal uh reigning with your fellow humans thank you pastor wow that was an amazing answer the bigger 100 marks for that answer excellent Thank you. So, uh, you know, we go back to, to the word, we go back to our mentors, we um, engage in, uh, you know, spiritual warfare, uh, we get back our, our faith. So, thank you. Thank you for that. And John, no problem. I understand. I think there's some network issue. Uh, so, you're unable to uh, share through audio. So, you were saying that uh, that could be a fact. But the truth is God is a God of miracles. Yeah. So uh, people could have these experiences of not hearing from God. But the, the fact is that we know God speaks and he does all these supernatural works in our lives. Okay. So I'm just reading other comments on the chat. Uh, Jeffina says, uh, why doesn't the supernatural take place in believers' lives? Not seeking the supernatural actually limits us. That's true. So we don't seek it. Rosalind says, Maybe the believers are happy and content with salvation. Yes. Okay. And Lubega had pointed out there are factors ranging from natural and spiritual factors. Each group can represent the forest. Okay. Thank you, Lubega, for that. Okay. Uh, uh, Brother Paul, you had something to share? Yes. I think another uh, thing is sin. When you are involved in sin, uh -huh. The Holy Spirit does. Uh, the Holy Spirit does not dwell in you, and then your altar will be dark, so there will be no flow of the supernatural in you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So uh, sin also will limit us. So these are all some of the reasons that keep us out of the supernatural. Today, we will look at the fifth key, uh, which will help us flow better. In the supernatural. Uh, so far, you know, I enlisted earlier on all the keys that we have talked about. So today's is anointing. Okay, today's is anointing. So we'll try and understand uh, what this anointing word means uh, and how is it that you know the supernatural can flow through the anointing. 
uh, you know, in our lives. So usually the term anointing is used or referred, it refers to the Holy Spirit. When we read uh, the scriptures in 1 John 2 verses 20 and 27, John says there that uh, we have the anointing within. Okay, we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So that simply refers to the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, which every believer has. So we all have the Holy Spirit and we have him living inside of us. And the Holy Spirit is termed as the anointed. Now, anointing, though the Holy Spirit abides in us, dwells with us, we also see that Jesus talked about the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So one is, Spirit is in me. As a believer, default. Right? I'm a born-again believer. Who lives in me? Holy Spirit lives in me. But there is something else that we must understand about the anointing. The Holy Spirit upon us. Okay, so what did Jesus say in Luke 4, verses 18 through 19? I would request one of us to read that passage. Uh, it's uh, quoted from Isaiah 61. Can somebody please read Luke 4, verse 18 and 19? Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. All right. Thank you, Jeffina. So you see how Jesus, you know, he talks about himself and he says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me and then he goes on to list certain things that God would do through his life to preach the good news, proclaim liberty, set the captives free. So uh, the uh, anointing of the spirit was upon Jesus to do the works of the spirit. Or it is the empowering of the spirit to do something. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. As we talk about the anointing within, we understand that this is what God has given us for our personal transformation. So, the anointing within, Holy Spirit living inside a believer. What are the functions of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer? What are all, you know, uh, things that you are aware of? What does the Holy Spirit do in a believer's life? Man, the Holy Spirit strengthens our relationship with Jesus. Yes, yes. Okay. Anything else, Rosalie? Teaches us this Very word good. he died. Very good. Yes. Yes. So he teaches us, he brings, yes, uh, uh, Brother Paul, go ahead. Intercede for us. <laughs> Intercede for us. Yes. Very good. So uh, he teaches us, he brings revelation of God's word to us, he intercedes for us, he leads us, okay? uh, he does the work of, we say, cleansing, okay? sanctification is also another work that the Holy Spirit does within a believer, in the life of a believer. So the anointing within is for the believer. But the anointing that we are talking about, you know, as far as the supernatural, manifesting the supernatural is concerned, is the anointing upon a believer 
or it is the empowering of god upon a believer to do the supernatural works of god so throughout uh, our session when we talk about anointing i am not so much referring to the indwelling presence of the holy spirit which has to do with the, the personal life of a believer or the or the walk of the believer with god but i am talking more about the empowering presence of the holy spirit to do the supernatural works of god so that is what we are going to try and understand so we also see in uh, the life of jesus that you know he went about doing good healing all those who were oppressed of the devil why was it possible because god was with him okay? he demonstrated the power of the spirit in and through his life and ministry so jesus was anointed we already saw how he uh, declared it in luke 4 he said the anointing is upon him to do all these works and we we see you know that step that he that he actually did those works by the power of the holy spirit now every believer as per scriptures we are told that we are anointed by god we are already empowered by god you know, to do uh, the supernatural works of god but what we need to do is we have to activate this anointing and begin to see the manifestation of the anointing so how is it that a believer can activate the anointing and therefore anointing becomes a very powerful key for the supernatural activation of the anointing what are all what what is involved in the activation of the anointing so let's understand the anointing a little bit today i'll i'll see how much i can cover i'm not too sure if uh, you know we would be able to complete this chapter in today's class but we'll do our best so we firstly activate the anointing by understanding how it functions how does it function the anointing flows through us aligned to god's grace and gifted on our lives every believer you know every believer has a grace of god upon them whenever we say that we mean that god gives them the i mean just for our understanding i'm putting it this way he gives them an ability okay which is unique or special to them so god gives grace grace is an empowering ability of god so god gives grace and he also gives gift gifts which you know are specific to that individual so let's just quickly look at uh, a couple of scriptures so that you know we we uh settle this this idea in our minds ephesians 3 and verse 7 could somebody read that for us and then second peter 3 and verse 18 ephesians 3 7 and second peter 3 verse 18 ephesians chapter 3 verse 7 of which i became a minister according to the gift of the grace of god given to me by the effective working of his power yes thank you azali so in that uh, we see that paul was given the grace of god to do what to be a minister for god in the capacity that he was he was an apostle uh he was uh you know a missionary he went ahead and did god's work he had the teaching grace on his life so all the all these graces and gifts we see in the life of paul and paul is saying that god gave the grace god gave these abilities to him to be an effective minister for god now first peter chapter 3 and verse 18 please First Peter chapter three verse eighteen. 
but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Okay, so here is the next piece that we can add to our knowledge. We said that God gives grace for us to do what he wants us to do. Notice, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what does that really do? There is a possibility for us to grow, isn't it? So we can grow in the grace. So can the grace over your life grow. Let's take, for example, uh, a grace for teaching. Okay? So we understood that God gives the grace. The ability or the empowering comes from him, from that teaching anointing, if you want to call it. Okay, that's understood. The second bit to add to that is grow in the grace. I can grow in the teaching anointing or the teaching grace over my life. Okay, now let's quickly look at another scripture. This is James chapter 4 and verse 6. Um, again, one of us, can you please read it for the class, please? James chapter 4, verse 6. But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Yeah, thank you. So we notice here that while we can grow in the grace that God has given to a particular person, he gives more grace to the humble. So uh, even beyond, you know, just increasing the anointing of God in that area on our life for the sake of you know, using the anointing, uh, life of submission to god matters okay so uh, when we walk in humility before god god gives more grace so there is uh, a possibility of increasing the grace of god over our lives okay so i hope you're not getting lost in what i'm saying i just want to make sure that you know we, we are able to get a handle is that okay, everyone, or too confusing? We're just getting started. Okay, good. Thanks, Jeffina. So Jeffina is saying, uh, <clears throat> ma'am, can you explain it one more time? Okay, so what I'm saying is, I'm saying anointing is God's empowering. Okay, and here are the... Uh, characteristics of God's anointing, which flows through our lives. All of us have or carry a certain kind of anointing. So we saw how Paul said, God has given me the grace to be a minister to you. So he is using the word grace there. Grace is also an ability which God gives. So different ones of us. Now we all have different abilities in the kingdom of God. Uh, like, you know, we could be a teacher, we could be a prophet, we could be an evangelist. So we carry different graces. Okay? But what I'm saying is these graces, or I'm also using the word anointing, the anointing which God gives us, we can grow in it. We can increase in it. And God is a God who is infinite. Okay, He is able to release greater grace over our lives. So I may have an anointing, but with my walk of submission to the Lord and my walk of humility before the Lord, that ability which I have can increase. Okay, so in a quick nutshell, that's what uh, that first point is about. So we can exercise God's grace, his gifts, they can become bigger and better, and we can also become better conduits of God's power and anointing uh, expressed through our lives. So that's the summary of it. Okay, 
So that bit about the anointing we've understood. So then you know, we can uh, think about how to increase the anointing over our own lives. Now that we got a hold of that thought. Okay, moving on. The anointing or the empowering of the Holy Spirit to do his work accompanies the word of God. John 6 and verse 63, Jesus said, My words, they are life and they are spirit. They are life and they are spirit. So the word of God causes uh, the anointing to flow through our life. So when I'm depending on the word of God, when I'm meditating in the word of God, spending time in the word of God, the word is also spirit. Okay, so we're associating anointing with what? We began by saying the Holy Spirit is the anointing. He's called as the anointing. So how can I have more anointing? How can I have more anointing of the spirit? I, by having more of the word in my life. So when I spend more time in the word, it will nourish me. It will also cause a greater release of the anointing of God to flow out of my life. So let's just take a simple example. Uh, healing, healing and deliverance. So when I start to spend time in God's word, again, I'm meditating upon uh, passages of healing, passages of deliverance. What happens? The empowering or the anointing of God in that particular area, it gets activated. So then when I begin to pray for people, for healing or deliverance, I would just see that uh, there's a better flow, you know, for our understanding, I'm using such terminology. There's just a better flow of the healing anointing. But what did I do to get there? I spent time in the word of God. Okay? So this is also something we can do to activate the anointing. I said first that we must understand what the anointing is, uh, how it gives ability or grace to us. Second is accompany the anointing with the word and the anointing will increase. So engage, engage in the word of God to see a particular kind of anointing flow. Let's take, for example, prophetic. So if I want to flow in the prophetic anointing, it would be good for me to take time studying the prophetic. Right? How does one hear from God? What is this whole thing about hearing from God, the word of God? So as I'm doing that, what's happening? The prophetic anointing in me is getting activated. Okay, And I will see that when I'm praying for people or you know, in general, trying to hear from God, it's just faster, easier. And I'm more sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is doing through me. Okay. So I'm going to stop again and just check if you're all here in spirit or the, how, I don't know, <laughs> which parts of you are here, if you've zoned off. Yeah, so any any thoughts or questions at this point about the anointing? Okay, Lubega, what do you think? You're on mute. All right. So I think I'll have to use the second key, faith. 
and keep continuing teaching. Huh? <laughs> I have no response from all of you. All right. No worries. No worries. I think we'll get it. Slowly we'll get it. Okay. This might uh, seem a little abstract. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Lubega says his mind is clear. Uh, okay. Zeli also said it's clear. So we can move forward. All right. So yes, so we said that the anointing flows better when uh, you are in the word. Now, the anointing flows better when we are consecrated. Can somebody please read 2 Timothy 2, verses 20 and 21? Second Timothy 2 verses 20 and 21. Yes. But in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Amen. Amen. So thank you, Rosalind. So you notice there that um, we are vessels, okay? Uh, or at least that analogy is given. A vessel is meant to contain something. And we know as believers that we have this conflict with the flesh. I could either go with what the flesh wants or I could go with what the Holy Spirit wants. So consecration means yielding to what the Holy Spirit wants. So if you can imagine a vessel, and that vessel is holding the Holy Spirit instead of the desires of the flesh, we would say that the vessel is given to the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, if it is dedicated, dedicated is... is uh, being holy or set apart, if you set something apart and say, hey, this vessel, it will only carry, in this case, the Holy Spirit, then what happens? Now, I'm walking in consecration. Uh, in other words, in practical ways, in and through our lives, when we're saying, God, I will say no to the things of the world, and I will say yes to you. What am I doing? So I'm submitting myself, I'm dedicating myself, I'm consecrating myself to God and the Holy Spirit. And what did we read in this passage? We become vessels of honor ready for the master's use. God is able to use us or, in other words, work through us because we have set ourselves apart for his use. So the anointing flows better when we are consecrated and we are yielded to the work of the Holy Spirit. So these are all ways in which we can see you know, a greater flow of the anointing through our lives. Okay, So all of what we discussed just now depends on the person who is ministering. So the person understands you know, what grace I have. So depending on the grace, you flow. So if let's say, you know, I have a grace to uh, write, okay? And I don't have the grace to sing. I would expect to uh, see the anointing of God flow through my writing instead of trying to sing. You get my point? So when I go with the right grace, there is a better flow of the Holy Spirit. Now, if I try to sing, what happens? I might not see a very effective ministry there because I'm trying to do something where there is no anointing. Okay, so similarly, uh, if if one has the the grace for administration and they are trying to function in a teaching anointing, it may not work because there is no empowering there. So one has to go with the anointing which they carry, and that's where understanding the grace, understanding the gifting comes in. Second, accompany with the word. 
So once I recognize the anointing that I have, if it's a prophetic anointing, I spend time in the word of God. And what did we learn earlier? Grow in the grace. So I can grow in the ability to do those things. And the last bit we saw there was when we humble ourselves, we are able to experience a greater anointing being poured out into us. And then we set ourselves apart. Uh, and God is able to flow through that dedicated vessel or you know, uh, committed person, submitted person unto the, law, uh, unto the Lord. So this is the way in which the anointing flows. So all of this had to do with the person who's ministering. Now, let's look at uh, what else might affect the flow of the anointing. So on the part of the people who are receiving, expectation is a factor that, that is uh, crucial. Now, if people are not expecting something to take place, you might find that uh, the anointing doesn't flow that well. Uh, so we have the example of uh, Jairus in Mark chapter 5. He came to Jesus to um, seek healing for his very sick daughter. He had an expectation from Jesus. Okay? Uh, we know that the people around, they stopped him. They said, hey, your daughter's dead. Don't bother Jesus anymore. But he still had an expectation from Jesus that Jesus could do something. So what happened? Jesus did minister to that child and she was raised from the dead. Now, there was also a woman in Mark chapter 5 who was trusting God for uh, a healing, uh, for the flow of her blood to stop. So for 12 years, the Bible says she suffered uh, in the hands of all kinds of uh, physicians, but it really did not benefit her in any way. But she goes with expectation to Jesus and touches the hem, hem of the garment, we also see there that she says to herself, if only I may touch the hem of his garment, I will be made well. And immediately, the Bible says, immediately the flow stopped. So what was it on the part of this woman that caused the anointing to flow? And then you know, we also see how Jesus says, hey, you know, uh, who touched me? Jesus was aware that power went out of him. What is this power? Remember, we're talking about the anointing. Anointing is a flow of the spirit, the empowering spirit, the Holy Spirit, who has given us a particular kind of grace. So in this case, we would say the healing anointing or the healing empowering uh, of the Holy Spirit upon Jesus, when a part of that left Jesus and touched this woman, she was healed, Jesus was even able to perceive in his spirit that the power had gone out of him. Okay, So what made the power or the anointing minister to this woman, her sense of expectation. If I may touch the hem of his garment, I will be made well. So she had an expectation from Jesus. When people have an expectation that, hey, God is going to show up, my needs are going to be met, or God will speak to me today, there will be a better flow of the anointing, which is why in church services, you know, generally we have a teaching time before you have the ministry time. So we talk about, okay, the power of God. This is what, uh, this is who Jesus is. So what happens? Faith is built up. And before one prays, or even you know, sometimes you don't even have to go up till the ministry time, people are expected and they begin to reach out to God. The, spiritual realm and they receive their miracles why expectation goes up what if there is no expectation there were times where jesus ministered in places 
where there was unbelief. People did not believe. The Bible says he couldn't do you know, miracles. He couldn't do much because people did not believe. Because they did not believe. So unbelief can actually hinder the flow of the anointing. What is the anointing? I've been saying it in different ways. The Holy Spirit, His power, according to the grace, that particular grace. So I talked about the healing of a woman, isn't it? 12 years, she was oppressed. Now, you can look at this as, you know, put the teaching example again. When we are speaking to people, if there is an expectation, okay, I am going to hear from God, I am going to understand something from God's word, what happens? There's a better flow of the teaching anointing. But if people don't expect anything, it might be the best sermon, but there is no manifestation of the supernatural. Okay? So expectation among the people is an important thing. That is something that uh, we should look into. Now, when we say expectation, we should be careful not to uh, raise expectations um, in a false way, just simply hyping things up and making everything very super spiritual. That's not what we're talking about. So don't do it in the wrong ways. but. Uh, a sense of expectation which is which is built on the word of God. When that kind of expectation is created, the supernatural flows better. Okay, uh, so we're trying to look at all this so that we can have a flow of the anointing in and through our lives. Okay, so. Uh, before it becomes like super abstract and all of you doze off online, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'll just share an example. I don't think I can finish this subject today at all. So we will have to revisit it in the next class. So I'll just share an example. Maybe you can ask some questions. Uh, that will make it interesting. So based on whatever we have discussed so far, You know, one can minister, one can use this practical information to minister. I know of, of uh, uh, certain ministers who work on this principle, especially expectation. You know, how they build people up in the word of God, or you know, they, they can be sharing of some testimonies, um, uh, or uh, there can be an exhortation. Before they pray for the people. So expectation is built up. And then when they minister, the supernatural Lakshmi takes place. Okay. Uh, so any any comments at this point? Yes. yes. Um, Ma'am, I have a question. Yes, yes. Yeah, so when you said that grace is an ability, from that moment I'm struggling with this. So is it like God is increasing the grace or we are experiencing more of his grace? Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Is it that God is increasing that grace or we are experiencing more of the grace? Okay. All right. So, as we saw um, in Ephesians 3 7, there is 
an amount of grace which is given. You know, when you take this word grace, the word grace is used in different contexts, in different passages. The grace that we are talking about is the empowering, you know, the ability which God gives. Okay. So it's both, Jeffina. That's the answer. God already gives us a level of grace, and it becomes my responsibility to steward that grace. If I want, I can leave it dormant. But if I want, I can increase it. Yeah, it's both. Does it help? Yeah, thank you. Okay. So let me just uh, touch on uh, another portion here that might bring more clarity. Yes. Okay, so in our notes, if you're looking at notes, uh, move ahead, move uh, ahead of the expectation point. And it says that there are different measures of the anointing. We will come to that point later. Let's look at uh, the section that says there are different kinds of anointing. So this whole ability, right? Uh, like Jeffina, what we said, it can be different for different people, different abilities. Okay? Uh, and according to that ability, or yeah, I'm just going to use the word anointing. So God gives you the anointing to, we say, oh, anointed singer, anointed preacher. So there is an anointing with regard to that gift. Which God has given, or the ability that God has given. So there can be different kinds of anointings. Now it's the same Holy Spirit, but there are different expressions of the gift. If based on the expression, we would you know term it as this anointing or that anointing or some other anointing. So there are different kinds of anointings. Now, even when we are ministering, you know, sometimes, uh, let's say it's a church service that's going on okay, towards the end of the service. And I've experienced this. You know, sometimes I just sense that there is such a power of God which is present uh, for me to minister in the prophetic. So, but then I go ahead and release words of knowledge. I go ahead and you know call forth things, and I'm just flowing in the type of anointing that exists or the power of God that exists at that point in time, which is a prophetic anointing. But there are times when we sense that the Holy Spirit is actually wanting to heal people's bodies, so then we flow with. The healing anointing. So there are different kinds of anointings, okay, and uh, uh, the same Spirit of God can manifest these anointings uh, through the life of one individual at different, you know, uh, points, or he can manifest these different anointings through different individuals. Okay, so I think whatever we've learned today forms the base. Uh, it will be easier to build on it in the next class. So sh let's just stop here. Uh, and I want to request one of us to pray, and we will wrap up the class. OK, uh, Brother Paul, can I request you to pray, please, again? Okay, not sure if he's able to hear me. Who else would be willing? Okay, Zeli. Okay, either Zeli or Jeffina, anyone? 
Okay, let's pray. Hey, we can pray. Yes, Paul, go ahead. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thank, we give you praise, we worship you, adore you, and we lift your name so high. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for your message that has inspired us, that has taught us. Lord, let your word now come and dwell in us. Let it increase us and multiply us. We pray all this for the glory of your name in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you, everyone. See you then. See you in the next class. Please do go through your notes. Okay? We will study the same chapter in the next session as well. Bye for now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Pastor.